it's, it's very strange. You, you fall in love with a particular um, period and, and then you fall out of love with it. Uh, although that's not quite it. I'm not out of love with the 17th century, but I fell in love with the 18th century. And it's got such a range of things for writers. You know, it's got an extraordinary range of things that, that you can learn about, write about, look at, think about. I've always got this attraction to the seamy side. <laughs> um, I, I think it's to do actually with power. I'm always interested in what um, people are doing who are on the very bottom level and the degrading shifts that they have to resort to in order to survive. Um, but, but also there's an element of um, excitement, you know, the forbidden, the dangerous, which I, I think if you didn't have any of that, then it would be quite difficult, I think, to construct a novel of, you know, of any excitement, really. And I hope that there is some excitement there. I think you could call it a, a tale of two women. Um, you could call it a tale of outsiders, because in some ways all of the people, the main characters, are up against it, as it were. Um, they are outsiders. One of the characters says to another at some point, you know, you were we were born outside the circle, you and I, but in fact it's not just those two, it's, it's quite a, a few of them. Um, it, it's a very strange sort of, of time where people are rising socially and learning how to fake it until they can make it, uh, to use an 80s expression, I think it is, but that's what they're doing, many people are doing in the 18th century, they are faking it until they can make it, they're rising by any means possible and um, industriously removing evidence of their origins. Um, I wanted the characters who weren't respectable, the ones who were really on the seamy side, to have a way of speaking that marked them off, um, stigmatised them, but also made them interesting and a bit mysterious. Uh, I couldn't write it all in the kind of language they would have used, otherwise it would have been impossible. At the moment there's a glossary, um, but I and I hope readers don't need it, but it's there just in case they want to have a look. So I had to judge it very closely and contextualise everything, and I hope that people can read that without needing the glossary, but they may find it interesting. This London is a a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Um, the stakes are high because there's a lot to win and, and losing is terrible. So either way, um, there's an awful lot to fight for. And of course there's no social security um, and when you sink, um, you can sink to a level which is absolutely unimaginable I think nowadays. There was quite a lot of discussion about what it should be and Ace King Knave was decided on quite late and I do think it's a very good title actually. Um, it's got the gaming in it um, and the mystery. Is one person an ace, a king and a knave or are they three different people, same or different? And also the obvious absence of the female. Where is the queen and who might the queen be? Um, I think in this book for the first time really I haven't got any male consciousness apart from the slave but the the main character the main male character you don't get inside his head at all he is to some extent a mystery to those around him and my previous um, published novels have always had um, a male first person narrator and I decided I wasn't going to do that at all this time. In fact, I was not going to have any first-person narrator, but the perspectives you get are principally female ones.